good morning for wherever you're joining us. Thank you very much for joining us uh, during this uh, event. Can you just confirm by the show of head that you can hear me well? Yeah, well, thank you. So a warm welcome to you and thank you for joining us uh, for today's event. My name is Silva. I'm the country director for MAG in Lebanon and I have the pleasure to be here today and host this side event on the Convention on Cluster Munitions Bridge Conference Part 2. And during the upcoming hour, uh, we will have the opportunity to shed the light on, on Lebanon. A couple of remarks uh, before we start. This uh, event is being recorded so that I will be able to, to share it. Uh, for those who are not able to attend it. And as we speak, uh, we are sharing in the chat a timeline which reflects the milestones and key moments for Lebanon over the past 10 years. Right, so um, as, we, as we know, in, in November 2010, Lebanon was the first state party from the Middle East to ratify the Convention on Cluster Munitions. And over more than 10 years now, Lebanon has made huge strides in the implementation of the CCM, including defining the cluster munition contamination baseline, improving clearance methodologies, as well as mainstreaming gender and advancing women's participation in cluster munition and in mine action program overall. As you may be aware of, for the past few months, Lebanon has been going through difficult times and an unprecedented and generalized crisis. Despite this situation, the commitment at an international level from Lebanon uh, through the Lebanon Mine Action Center should be recognized and supported. The end is in sight, really, and last year, Lebanon was granted an extension of five years and committed to achieve compliance with the CCM Article 4 of obligation by the 1st of May 2026. During this side event, we will profile the progress achieved by, the, by Lebanon since the entry into force of the Convention on Cluster Munition and also explore the impact that clearance of cluster munition has had on development in Lebanon. We will also uh, look at the future, uh, assessing the remaining contamination and uh, plans to address it, as well as uh, the need for ensuring sustainable national capacities to deal with any residual or any other forms of contamination after completion of clearance of cluster munition remains. Just before we start with the, the speeches of our various uh, speaker, just please note that our guest speaker will be able to take questions at the end of this event, so feel free to drop them on the chat or save them uh, for later uh, when the moment comes at the end. So, without any further delay, uh, I would like to welcome and thank our first guest, who is Mr. Balouk uh, the Mukhtar from the village of Tul in south of Lebanon, uh, one of the places which is unfortunately highly contaminated by cluster, munition, cluster munition. Uh For technical reasons, uh, Mr. Balouk agreed to record a speech uh, and share his point of view from the community directly concerned by the contamination of cluster munition in uh, Lebanon. Uh, so I would like, if we can play now, please. Thank you very much. أنا ركان بلوق مختار بلدة طول قضاء النبطي. بلدتنا تعرضت لقصف عشوائي بأزانات أو حاويات قنابل عنقودية بال 74 وعملت عنا تلوث بالأراضي تقريبا نسبة 80% بالأراضي اللي للبلدة. سهول بكاملة تعرضت وصار عنا ضحايا كتير من وراء القنابل بعد التدمير المنازل تدمير القرية صار يطلع عشب وبعد الشتاء بعد هذا اندملوا هلا تعرض أشخاص للقتل منهم أطفال والأطفال يعني بلشوا يتعرضوا للقتل مثلا راحوا ولدين بسنة 92 أيمن بيسي وحسام بيسي آه راح عنا كمان ب 92 بلال زهري طفل كمان راح عنا طفل أحمد رائد مقلد 
بال 99 راح عنا بال 2004 ايوب ايوب راح عنا بال 2019 علي عباس معتوق طفل كمان راح ضحايا جرحى كثير راح غيرهم كثير لذلك بهال الاراضي يعني التلوث تبع القنابل عرض البلدي اول شيء ما في عمران ما في حياه فيها ليه؟ لانه لوثي بالقنابل هلا بعد هالفتره هيدي اجوا الجيش من فتره وساعدوا بتنظيف بعض قسم من الاراضي مشكورين وبعد منا اجوا الماج الماج بعد ما قتل علي عباس معتوق الطفل هيدا اجوا وبلشوا بالتنظيف المنطقه والحمد لله يعني هلا المجهود اللي عم يعملوه آه شباب وصبايا طبعا آه كثير مجهود مشكورين عليه لانه خلوا هالاهالي ترتاح نفسيا شوي انه محل صار في عمران صار في واحد يزرع صار في كذا طبعا مش كل المناطق بعد في مناطق آه يعني عديدة عقارات عديدة بعد لسه موجود فيها القنابل ومشكورين يوميا عم بيتابعوا وعم بيشتغلوا ونحن حاسين بالأمان بوجودهم بالبلد كيف عم بيشيلوا كيف عم بيعرضوا حالهم للخطر مقابل انه هالناس ترتاح الأطفال ترتاح انه عنا مدارس عندنا بيوت عندنا عائلات عندنا اطفال كثير بال بال بالبيوت بالحارات و... والحمد لله انه بلشوا يريحونا وبلشت العالم تزرع على العموم مشكورين ان شاء الله و... وان شاء الله يستمروا لحتى تخلص القصه يعني يا ما خلصوا عائلات من من قنابل عنقوديه وبذكر منهم عائله كانوا مهجرين سوريين كانوا قاعدين على حصيري بالصدفة شباب الماغ والصبايا بيكتشفوا انه تحت العصيري بالارض على عمق تقريبا شيء 40 سم في قنابل اثنين انقوديات الله لطف وشالوهم والحمد لله خلصوا عائلة بكاملة من القصف وهذا كله سببه عدوان اسرائيلي بلا رحمة يعني يعني عم بزت شغله انه بشكل طابي لحتى ولد يكون شيء يلعب فيها تفجر فيه، هيدي شغله اذى ويعني من اساسها هي اجت للاذى بس على المنطقه. على العموم مشكورين كثير الماغ وشباب الماغ وصبايا الماغ والجيش اللبناني لهم الشكر الجزيل. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Baluk uh, for his testimony from the community. Uh, you will see in the video that he gives his perspective on, on, on the cluster munition and from those directly impacted by it, and uh, his, uh, his hope for the future as well. Our next speaker uh, from the Lebanon Mine Action Center is, has kindly accepted our invitation to represent the National Mine Action Authority during this event. Lieutenant Colonel Maroon is the chief of the Regional Mine Action Center in the south of Lebanon and based in Nabatier. He holds a Bachelor in Political and Administrative Science and a Bachelor in Military Science. He has earned a graduate degree from Command and Staff College as well. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Maroon has been working in the humanitarian mine action since 2004 and starting from the Lebanese Armed Force Engineering Regiment and the National Demining Office before it became the, the ELMAC, the Lebanon Mine Action Center. He held several positions, including Operations and Quality Assurance Officer, Executive Officer of the Non-Technical Survey Project, MDD Company Commander, and he is now the ELMAC South Chief based in Navatier. So, Lieutenant Colonel, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. Thanks everybody for attending this meeting. 
I try to share my screen because it was supposed uh, to be shared from another place. Let me check. Is that okay? Everyone can see that. Okay, we will try in this uh, small presentation to uh, talk about the achievements and the challenges that we are facing now since we, uh, we are 10 years ahead by clearing or releasing uh, CPU uh, areas. We will talk about strategy, statistics, prioritization and challenges. First about strategy, uh, Lebanon Humanitarian Mine Action Strategy 2020-2025 is the result of collective effort from all uh, humanitarian mine action community. I don't want to forget anybody, ALMAC, UNMAS, UNDP, implementing agencies, donors, UNHCR, UNICEF, and uh, all other uh, organizations. It sets clear pri priorities uh, and firm direction towards our common goal of Lebanon free uh, of the negative impact caused by explosive ordnance. The strategy was developed under the leadership of ALMAC and its capacity as a secretary of the Lebanon Mine Action Authority with support from the EU funded UNDP project. This strategy, uh, strategy emphasizes uh, the government of Lebanon commitment to the humanitarian mine action and our respect and adherence to international humanitarian law. The vision of this strategy is Le Lebanese communities prosper free from the threat of explosive ordnance. Uh, the Lebanon Mine Action Program will put the explosive ordnance affected people at the center of our work. We also acknowledge that uh, we have uh, to work in partnership and where possible in an integrated no uh, manner with other sectors to ensure that released land is taken into productive use. About the mission, Lebanon Mine Action Program will enclose partnership with relevant stakeholders, continue to use best and emerging practices to ensure an efficient and effective and relevant program. Lebanon Mine Action Program also recognized that humanitarian mine action in Lebanon is a team effort and as a Lebanon Mine Action Program, we, uh, we will strive to work on uh, together to ensure optimal use of our collective resources. We are also aware that close dialogue and interaction with affected communities is important if we are able to be relevant and to have the desired impact. It's about our strategy. We'll continue now with the statistics. This is statistics of 2020. We will find uh, we always we have a baseline uh, due to uh, the effort of the ALMAC and the other uh, implementing agencies that, that we are helping to make NTS. So we have uh, in the couple of past years, we have corrected the baseline many times. And if you can see, we are now uh, about. Sorry, I think. Is there still. Uh, What is shared now? Let me see. Are you still can 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 you see uh, the presentation? No, I think the, the screen dropped. Let me uh, share another time. Perfect. Is that OK now? Yes, it is. OK, thank you. So we are uh, almost about 87% released area of uh, CBU. We still have remaining 7.2 square kilometers. Uh, let's talk about the NTS. The NTS uh, concerning the CBU, we have additional size about 900,000 square meters as added size. And for uh, cancelled about 286,000 was released through cancellation. About the data cleanup, uh, during the period 2018-2020, a lot of work done to make uh, the baseline more accurate. Uh, we made many changes in the NMAS, try to, uh, to avoid any uh, unnecessary work, let's say. So in 2008, the site of the cluster munition strike area was a circle of 33,000 square meters. 
Now uh, we uh, we change into a square according to the fade out of 50 meters. So it was changed to 10,000 square meters. Uh, our colleague uh, Mufida will go into details more. I will talk about this issue. Uh, in 2020, we were preparing to shift to MS Macor. Again, I think. I don't know what's. Is that OK? It dropped again. Sorry. You want to share it again, sorry. I think something prevent me to share the, the screen. I don't know what's uh, going on. It's working now. But you can still hear me, right? OK, so in 2020, we were preparing to shift to MS Macor. And we noticed that we have a lot of data that needs to be cleaned, like we have overlapping between uh, contaminated areas or overlapping between clearance and contaminated area. So we made a data cleanup for all our uh, data, and we could we could save about 900,000 square meters that we were removed due to this uh, overlapping. About the priorities. By 2020, the remaining contamination with all kinds of hazardous items uh, areas in Lebanon were around 26% of the surveyed land. So, ELMAC considered to re-evaluating its prioritization scheme and methodology. The new prior, uh, priority system adopts a three-category approach. Uh, we go into safety, economic, and uh, three. it's disabled the screen uh, sharing is disabled I don't know okay I'll continue I don't want to waste your time uh, for this issue so we go into three categories safety economy and uh, a treaty compliance the reprioritization of task uh, starts in 2021 based on the new system and corresponding criteria this was achieved through regularly updated data that is analyzed. Uh, Alma considers that this is a new prioritization system represent the core of humanitarian mine action and is ess uh, essentially to support all actors in the decision making and eventual monitoring and evaluating of land release impact. So we can see now it's a matrix now from uh, A to L. It's according to uh, first we go into safety, then economy and then at last the treaty compliance we have we will divide our uh, areas into these uh, categories in a we have three subcategories and so on until the category l the challenges lebanon is faced a com uh, complex explosive ordnance threat it was israeli uh, occupation nine, uh, 78 2000 civil war 78 uh, uh, 90 uh, Israeli aggression in 2006, and we have the last conflict in the Northeast. Also, we have uh, a complex environment. The political situation in the region is fragile, and peace, security cannot be taken for granted. I'll continue, don't worry. Uh, with the extensive contamination in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and Yemen, so commitment and continued support from our donors also cannot be taken as uh, for granted. Uh, we have lack of fund. We have lack of fund, especially for the UK humanitarian mine action. It was around the world. It's caused about uh, in Lebanon six uh, cluster munition clearance teams. Uh, for sure, this will affect our uh, productivity and will decline the clearance rates. About the CCM extension, we begin the CCM extension with remaining area about 8.7 square kilometers to be cleared. And then according to the last three average uh, released area, we were supposed to make about 8.8 .8 square kilometers. So in five years, we can achieve uh, our goal to uh, release all uh, known cluster munition strikes. Uh, for sure, COVID and uh, 
the lack of fund affect this uh, extension. But another, uh, the data cleanup and other uh, methodologies help us now. Uh, if we remember, we have 7.2 as the remaining area. Uh, we believe that in 1.2 square kilometers per year, uh, about six square uh, uh, kilometers to be cleared. In that way, we will remain about 1.2 square kilometers. We believe that on focusing on technical survey, especially because we have a lot of tasks that we have uh, only one item found. So through technical survey, we can investigate more the area if it's this one is an actual CPU or just someone dropped this uh, cluster mission in this uh, area. And for sure, uh, new technologies like detectors, I think also Mufida will cover this uh, point and mechanical means will help to achieve the goals. And at last, difficult terrain. We have a study with support of GICHD about the non-contaminated areas where we have difficulties to access or uh, to access or to clear it, like very thick vegetation areas, a deep slit, uh, steep slope areas, or special mechanical assets needed. The study will come out with solutions and estimation about cost and time needed to be released. Uh, we hope uh, the study will be published. It will help us and uh, also for other mine action programs if they have uh, the similar cases uh, in their uh, countries. This is uh, my uh, presentation. If you want at the end uh, of this meeting, I can uh, answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Silva. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your insights and also your perspective. I think it, it's great to get the picture of how has the LMAC taken the lead and the ownership Stop of- Stop sharing. Sorry again? Yeah. So I think, yeah, as I was saying, I think it, it's great to get the picture of how has the LMAC taken the lead and the ownership of the mine action program in Lebanon and, and build a solid strategy despite the challenges that you, you've mentioned. And, and really to support its commitments toward uh, its international obligation as signatory of the CCM. Thank you very much, sir. Our next uh, guest speaker has agreed to join uh, the event and share with us a perspective from the donors. Uh, his name is Christian and he covers disarmament and humanitarian issues at the Norwegian mission to the UN in Geneva. Uh, he joined the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 2015, was posted in South Africa prior to his uh, current position in Geneva. So thank you very much for joining us today and the uh, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvain. Uh, does this work now? Yes, OK, good. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, all, and, and, and uh, thank you for the invitation to come and speak. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure, and um, I usually you know, ask myself w w when we get invitations to speak at events, why do they want uh, Norway's perspective? And uh, uh, and I think the answer here is probably uh, has something to do with with our long-standing um, uh, and close cooperation with Lebanon uh, on mine action, which from 2006 has also started covering the clearance of, of cluster munitions. And I think the answer also has to do uh, with the uh, Mine Action Forum or the country coalition, if you will, uh, that Lebanon, uh, the operators and Norway uh, set up some years ago. Um, so I'd like to spend a few minutes that I have to, to talk about uh, the Mine Action Forum, uh, which was um, initially established uh, at a one-day workshop in Beirut in 2018 which brought together the LMAC, uh, the International Donors and Clearance Operators, uh, with the aim to discuss how to best address uh, the mine and cluster munition contamination in, uh, in Lebanon. Uh, the roots, however, go back to 2016, when uh, the Netherlands and Norway, in our capacity as co-coordinators for clearance and, and uh, risk education under the CCM, hosted the first clearance and survey workshop in Lebanon, which was facilitated at the time by the GICHD. 
Uh, and the aim of that workshop uh, was to enable an open and frank dialogue uh, between the LMAC and the operators and the donors on very concrete technical uh, issues, uh, such as land release methodology and risk management, uh, the enhanced uh, operational efficiencies uh, through better use of non-technical and technical survey, uh, as well as to discuss the then ongoing um, revision of Lebanon's uh, national mine action standards um, uh, of course, effective uh, mine action was a shared objective all along, and, and there was, of course, dialogue among the stakeholders well before 2016. Uh, what the workshop taught us, uh, though, was that um, the power dynamics, if you will, between authority and implementing partners, uh, the fact that the operators depend on the goodwill of national authorities, could be perceived as a barrier to the kind of frank exchange that you need on sensitive issues. Maybe instill some kind of a hesitation, maybe on the part of the operators, uh, and also that a friendly uh, partner government can help facilitate that dialogue between the operators uh, who have a wealth of experience both in uh, that particular kind of situation and elsewhere, and know where the shoe pinches uh, and the national authority. Um, and we have also learned, you know, throughout the existence of the Mine Action Forum, that the donor country itself can become a better and more relevant partner by investing in these uh, political and technical uh, exchanges uh, by having the um, local embassy take ownership of the issue and, and sort of increase its technical understanding of it uh, greatly then increase the donor's ability to be a helpful partner in that country context because otherwise uh, at least for our part the mine action program is run out of Oslo uh, with just a few colleagues there and, and there's a quite uh, diverse portfolio that they have so that they have limited uh, time uh, and resources to you know go into every each and every country context so for our embassy to to play that part was very helpful and of course it also improves donor coordination and a, a third thing that we learned um, is that even though we all instinctively know of course that a broad dialogue that promotes a common understanding among the stakeholders of, of where to go and, and how to get there. Uh, although we know that that is, of course, usually beneficial, uh, there is less of it in practice than one could want. Um, and in hindsight, I think the idea of a country coalition is almost you know, self-evident, yet there's remarkably few examples of it out there. Um, yeah, uh, my speaking time is up, so uh, I'll, I'd just like to end on, on a note of thanks to Lebanon and our in-country partners for the cooperation we've had, and uh, also take the opportunity to encourage uh, other donors and affected countries who are uh, listening now to follow suit. Uh, and in that regard, we have two tips, uh, and the one is that the lead donor should be a country with a local presence and, and uh, preferably strong bilateral ties to the affected country. And also that the dialogue should be as technical as possible, uh, which makes it, you know, more pointed and effective. And you also avoid getting bogged down in the political ceremony that often uh, is around uh, more political meetings. That has a rightful place, of course, too, but maybe more here in Geneva. And I think this is where uh, Lebanon, Norway, and our partners uh, succeeded uh, quite well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, for this. It's it's always extremely important for us to have the donor perspective, uh, especially in this kind of events. As you mentioned, the role of Norway has been playing in leading the country coalition, encouraging the humanitarian man action forum and even technical working group among operator. Clearly, has leveled up, leveled up. Sorry, the the efficiency on mine action in Lebanon, and this should be recognized. And we are all very much looking forward to the upcoming. Uh, Forum at the end of this month. Thank you again. Uh, our next speaker is joining us live from the northeast of Lebanon, where she's just returned from the field. Her name is Mofida. She joined MAG Lebanon in 2016 as a D minor. In um, 2018, she was successfully trained and accredited as the site supervisor. She was initially based in the south of Lebanon, so working as uh, on minefields uh, tasks along the Blue Line, and then uh, shifted to a different area of operation in 2019 when we operated in uh, the northeast of Lebanon. 2021 has been a challenging year uh, for all, but yet successful uh, year for Mofida. Uh, she completed uh, an EOD3 course at the Regional School of Hamana and also got promoted as Field Operation Manager. 
opening the way for women to higher managerial position. Mufida has agreed to discuss with us the challenges she faces on BAC tasks and operation methodology to increase the efficiency and pace of work uh, when it comes to clearing cluster munition. Again, thank you very much, Mufida, and uh, happy to hear from you now. Thank you, Sylvain, and thank you all for your invitation. I will share my uh, presentation now. Uh, as uh, Sylvain uh, said, I joined the uh, MAG in uh, 2016 as uh, Deminer, and since I've joined MAG, I've worked uh, in a mixed teams of men and women. And as a Deminer, I had the same role like any other men in the in the in the team. And if, uh, and also, I get the chance to apply for any position as well. And this gives me the, ch the the will and the chance to apply for the becoming a team leader and then a site supervisor and now as a field uh, operation manager. It's a great challenge, but I am proud of my uh, Lebanon uh, work, uh, Mag's work in Lebanon, and I'm proud uh, for the place that uh, they allowed me and supported uh, me to to achieve. Uh, I'm working now in northeast area, where uh, this area. In August 2014 and 2017, it's got a uh, non-state conflict ar uh, along the Syrian-Lebanese border from Ar Ar Grooms, ISIS, and Jabhat al-Nusra, where they occupied the region and occupied uh, the, the Jirud of Farsal and Jirud of Baalbek. Military operation Fajr Jirud from LAF uh, occurred, released the land from terrorists, and started the, the uh, open the opportunities for NGOs to start the clearance. Conventional and provides line by discovered during the offensive and after the conflict, which uh, created uh, the, the area to be dangerous and unsafe for the people uh, to come around. Mike started the clearance uh, cluster munitions in 2018. This is the area, the zone. As you see, it's a very big zone along the Syrian and Lebanese uh, area and borders. The team, the clearance started with MAG in 2018. The terrain in Jirud, Baalbek and Jirud Arsal at northeast is uh, mountainous with steep slopes and rocky and it's very uh, difficult uh, terrains where sometimes we use uh, mechanical assets in order to create access, in order to achieve uh, the access for the sites, for the area and allow us to start the clearance. We witness uh, very heavy rains, snow, and very cold uh, temperatures during winter, from November actually to March, which is uh, which created a, a great challenge for us to start the clearance during winter seasons. COVID-19 pandemic also has its uh, weight on our operation, but we manage with cooperation with ALMAC to carry on a clearance uh, due to our prevention measures and the protocols related to SOPs and uh, ALMAC uh, protocols. This was done, of course, as usual, with the uh, Almac authorities and uh, the Armac uh, over here in Northeast area. As, uh, as our cooperation and the working side was uh, side to side with Almac, this uh, helped us to increase operational efficiency. Uh, for example, once of uh, one of the points that uh, Lieutenant Colonel has mentioned, we as a cluster munition, we had the diagram for uh, doesn't show, I think. Can you see the diagram? Okay, it doesn't uh, seem. We, we used to work in a circle uh, parameter where it has uh, 33,000 uh, meters square, but it was changed by ALMAC after many amendments to 10,000 meters square. This allowed us Okay. Yes. I'm sure. seeing mine. I think just one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. This uh, helped us uh, from going from circle uh, parameter to square parameters and save 23,000 meters square. And of course, it's helped us uh, to increase productivity in a short, uh, effect, effect, uh, effective, and safe way. And also with uh, Almac, with cooperation with Almac, uh, the, the the detection. The detection uh, subsurface drill was a change from 20 centimeters 
to 15 centimeters, which help us to increase uh, the productivity as well. And of course, this happened during uh, many amendments and many, uh, if many uh, amendments and many, sorry. And uh, this helped us, uh, for example, and we, we did uh, change the depth of clearance from minimum depths when we has to use to, to search 20, uh, 20 centimeter to 15 centimeter uh, excavation drills. And then, uh, and this help, help us to, to estimate time reduction for 30, uh, 30%. And uh, this help us, okay, this is good. Okay, now it's all right. Thank you. Yes, thank you. As I said, we changed. Uh, no, we changed the depth of uh, clearance from 20 centimeter to 15 centimeter, and this uh, help us with uh, reduction 30 percent of time consuming and productivity. Now we are working with uh, three teams. Three MAT teams, MAT 16, MAT 17, and MAT 18. Our field operations, we have 46 uh, national staff and one international TFM staff. We have sub, uh, seven national staff for support, and the total of our capacity is 53 uh, people in Northeast uh, program. Our teams are deployed now in uh, three different areas. We have uh, Wadi Hawarta, Wadi Martabia, and uh, Mkhairmi. We have multitask, we have IED task for improvised devices and BAC task for cluster munitions. Our teams almost finished all the BAC sites in Wadi Martabia and now we are planning to finish our BAC sites in Hawarta. That's mean in the maximum of October 5th. That's mean all the cluster munition sites that we had will be hand cleared, completed and will be handed over back to ALMAC by maximum October 5th. That's mean after two weeks. Our clearance uh, for now statistic, statistic, we manually cleared around 1,013,568 meters squared. We removed 15 submunitions of AO 2.5, 18 submunitions of uh, Siri M, Rock Tiles 18, 118. We removed around 75 OXO, different OXO types like head of rockets, uh, mortars, some projectiles we used to, uh, to remove them. And for now, we cleared around 83 uh, sites completed and we have 59 sites completed clearance and handed over to ALMAG. And we are planning to maximum by 2021 to have at least 70 uh, sites cleared and handed over back to ALMAG. Before, uh, before uh, many, many plantation area was affected by ISIS invasion and uh, due to cluster munition contaminations, uh, people were not able to access their lands and in order to, to clean, to start plantation and cultivation. During our progress from 2017 till now, now at Wadi Hawarta, Khirbet Dawood and uh, Wadi Martabia, 50% of the people are now back again to their land. They are able again to cultivate, to plant their uh, lands. 60% of these lands are planted with and cultivated by cherry, with cherry trees uh, and different types of plantation uh, and different line, uh, kinds of plantation. And this help, help us and make us proud when we see civilians and locals are back again and they have the face Again, that this area are, is cleared by us and it's safe for them to, to cultivate and benefit from their land again. And for us, uh, as MAG always and with cooperation and working side, was, uh, side by side with ALMAG, is, all, also, is of course to make Lebanon land mine free uh, of cluster munitions or any threat by maximum May 2026. Actually, all teams here from me and any supervisors and all teams are striving to complete, to complete and uh, clearance in, for all cluster munitions for all IED tasks in Northeast. 
and it makes us very proud. And once we see people are coming back to their land and they feel safe, it makes us proud. And Lebanon, uh, for us, is Lebanon. This is, it's our homeland. And we are very committed uh, side by side with, with ALMAC to clear our uh, land and make it safe again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As you're ending a long day on the field as well. So I think the progress of the work in the Northeast is also very impressive. And the work done there is also in line with uh, the commitments on the con Convention and Cluster Munition. So uh, I can all, of course, uh, wish you to continue uh, at this space of work. And as a personal home, I hope that uh, your careers, efforts, and progress inspire uh, many other women as well. I think it would be very good. Thank you. Our next guest, sorry, is joining us from uh, Geneva, uh, Rana. Uh, Rana is currently working at the GICHD at uh, the cooperation programs as sorry for cooperation program coordinator. Uh, she uh, coordinates and manages uh, regional events of the Arab Regional Cooperation Program in the Middle East, North Africa region, Eastern Europe, Caucasus, and Central Asia, uh, as well as the Francophone Program covering parts of Africa. So, prior to joining the GICHD in 2013, uh, Rana worked for about 10 years uh, with the UNMAS as the information management officer in the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo and in the south of Lebanon as well. So thank you very much for joining us today and uh, please the floor is yours. Thank you, Sylvan. Can I just check that you can hear me clearly? We can hear Perfect. you very well. Perfect. Thank you very much um, for the invite, and it's really my pleasure to be uh, to be with you today on this event. And thanks to all the colleagues who joined us. Um, thanks as well, particularly to Mag for organizing uh, this online meeting. Um, as you may know, the GISHD. So I will not have a presentation. I will have few words. Hopefully, I will stick to the uh, to the to the timeline as we're running out of time. So the GSHD supports the Lebanon Mine Action Center in its uh, national efforts to fulfill its convention obligations. And we really enjoy as GSHD with ALMAC a long working uh, relationship that dates back uh, as far as the year 2001. Uh, I will present few focus areas that we had been working on closely and in liaison with, uh, with ALMAC, with the Lebanon Mine Action Center. And these are focused mostly on the ter in terms of um, the broader capacity development initiatives, as well as uh, some of the future projects. So the initial GISHD supports was very much um, initially focused on its um, in its initial stages in information management. So as you know, this is a key area, you know, for Lebanon, uh, but you know, for the sector more broadly. Um, so I can, we can say that Lebanon is one of the first programs uh, following Kosovo and Azerbaijan that had utilized uh, the information management system for mine action, uh, IMSMA. And this is really in the initial uh, phase. Um, it was called back then IMSMA Legacy. Then the databases was migrated uh, to IMSMA NG, new generation, which then allowed for further enhancement of the quality of data and the cleanup of uh, the system. And the Lieutenant Colonel Maroon had covered a bit on the cleanup of this uh, database. Uh, but more recently, um, since uh, 2020, the main objective uh, for particularly the IM support for ALMAC uh, is very much to establish a functional system that supports the strategic uh, and operational management, enabling uh, the ALMAC to accurately report uh, to various donors, uh, but also to implementing partners and stakeholders on the progress. In terms of the broader term, this is a process um, that allows for both the GSHD and the ALMAC to jointly establish these clear, um, clear data flows and create dashboard environments uh, representing the current state of information in a clear and accessible uh, manner. So this process targets as well the collection, storage, analysis, and, and the broader dissemination of the fit for purpose uh, data and information, um, data and information in general, but also allocating the sustainable uh, resources, including through training and workshop. 
So on this front, the JSHT will continue to support the ALMAC with the transition to IMSMA core, um, as this will further assist and enhance in the prioritization and the planning. When it comes to the short term period, we are planning to conduct an IAM workshop, information management workshop via a site visit potentially in, in November. And the main objective of this workshop would be to discuss and address the challenges needs uh, of ALMAC, but as well as the implementing partners uh, based on their usage of the IMSMA core data collection forms uh, that were recently uh, established. As Lebanon moves forward with the implement, implementing its uh, national strategy, um, a support had been requested uh, from the JSHD uh, to initiate discussions on long-term risk management and capacity. Um, so far, two workshops were proposed um, in the scope to support the ALMAC. Uh, one had been delivered and there's a plan to conduct a second one uh, so that the workshop or this type of work will tackle the question of risk management, including the risk management approaches uh, in mine action, evidence-based risk management, as well as uh, residual. Again, this is a process similar to, to the IMSMA core process uh, in general. Uh, which started, it kicked off um, and will continue uh, with the aim to introduce the concepts uh, and the kickstart the process, um, you know, of framing how the ALMAC will develop the appropriate strategies, including managing the transition from the proactive to the active approach or management and then identifying uh, the responsibility for addressing the residual uh, items of the explosive ordinance, um, you know, as they are being identified once the main clearance um, is or has been completed. I take this opportunity um, to talk very briefly or to mention that as well following Lebanon's ex extension request, the ALMAC had identified contaminated areas as mentioned uh, by Lieutenant Colonel Maroon, uh, known to be the difficult terrain type of areas um, as a challenge in achieving completion. So we see that Lebanon has committed, um, you know, to, to make sure the clearance targets these areas, but also to conducting a study uh, that will focus on, on how to address these issues and to propose good practice aimed at providing state parties the guidance um, potentially that could be useful to other countries. Um, so again, the JCHT was requested to work with the ALMAC on this on this front, and we partnered with uh, with the colleagues in ALMAC uh, to do a study, and we 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 just conducted a field visit to Lebanon at the end of August. There was delays, of course, uh, due to COVID, um, and the results of which will be shared in in due course. Um, our colleague Christian from Norway mentioned the Mine Action Forum. So this is just very briefly to reiterate uh, and to echo what had been said, that as the GISHT, we really see um, high value uh, in the country coalition approach uh, that is currently being promoted uh, with, within the convention. And we stand ready to support it uh, further. As mentioned in Lebanon, particularly a successful example with the lead of Norway and the Netherlands, the JSHD had the chance to facilitate and attend the Mine Action uh, Forum since its early days back, uh, as mentioned, 2016. So we could really see how this initiative would further um, is a key to supporting uh, states towards the fulfillment of their uh, convention obligations. We will continue to, to, to support as required, um, and we will facilitate, um, along with Norway and Netherlands, the upcoming Six Mine Action Forum uh, based on the request, um, you know, as well from UNDP and ALMAC. Um, having Mufida with us today is really great pleasure. Uh, I must also say that the GISHD uh, had conducted in 2019 gender and diversity assessment, and we are undergoing a support project following that assessment. We will continue to work with the ALMAC uh, to review key documentations uh, that will help further advancement uh, with the gender and diversity uh, mainstreaming. So this activity is as well. Uh, plan towards uh, Q4 this year, uh, hopefully in person in November. 
last but not least, and I'm looking at the time, <laughs> and stemming from promoting, you know, the South-South cooperation, uh, you know, the broader South-South cooperation between the programs, the GSHD has partnered um, through a memorandum of understanding uh, an MOU with ALMAC and since 2015 in coordinating and co-managing activities under the umbrella of the Arabic Cooperation Program, which is a regional framework spread across the Middle East and North Africa region. And this MOU with ALMAC has been renewed, just to flag this, uh, in 2020. And really the sharing of good practice um, is at the core of this program. And ALMAC, uh, very much thanks to them, had been a key partner in this region to help advance mine action through a strong national ownership and support to other countries in the region uh, in the delivery of, of the training. So under the umbrella of this program, the GSHD holds regional events uh, supported by the ELMAG uh, through an approach of a train of the trainer and relying as well on the ELMAG expertise uh, to co-deliver sessions during this event. So all of this to say we are committed to continue our support um, to Lebanon and the ELMAG in order to fulfill uh, the convention obligations. And thank you for, for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Rana, for this uh, deep insight from uh, the GICHD perspective. Uh, I, we know how much you're involved in Lebanon in coordination with the LMAC, so uh, this is great to hear that you remain committed and you've got all uh, very exciting projects ahead uh, to make uh, the LMAC even uh, standing higher than where it is at the moment. We have, uh, we're now done with the, the speeches uh, from all our guests, so thank you very much. We still have around like five minutes for taking questions, so now is the time to be asking questions and I'm happy to forward them, to redirect them to uh, whoever speakers you wish to speak to, if anyone has questions. Sebastian, you have a question? I will unmute you. I think now you can go ahead and speak. Mute. Yes, I found it. Hi. Yeah, this is Sebastian. And um, I just uh, wanted to add the aspect of risk education and wanted to ask um, how that was addressed. It hasn't really been covered in the different uh, presentations so far. And maybe for the example of the Northeast, um, could be interesting to hear a little bit about risk education. And the uh, second question is about the uh, country coalition approach. So I'm wondering, it has been so successful, what's next? What's on the agenda for these meetings? I think I only remember that some funding broke down and as, as maybe difficult for some of our partners in country to continue working. So that comes to my mind when I think of the country coalition, but I would be interested to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Um, right, all right. Uh, country coalition. Uh, Christian, do you want to uh, to answer this question? Sure, to the best of my ability, at least. Uh, there is a new meeting on the 28th, which is uh, in what, seven days, a week's time. Uh, I don't know exactly what's on the agenda there because I haven't seen that yet. Uh, but I just got to confirm from my colleague at the embassy in in, in Beirut. Um, so, um, uh, but I would imagine that I mean a, 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 any topic can be discussed, and and as we've seen also in in uh, you know uh, lately uh, with the. Uh, uh, other states that are interested in looking into the country coalition concept. I mean, it, it isn't a one size fits all where, where you have to do something or can't do something. So I imagine if you wanted to talk about funding, for instance, which is what you mentioned, Sebastian, then that, that should be perfectly possible. But I, I, as I said, I don't know what's uh, what's on the agenda for this uh, for this next upcoming meeting. But maybe somebody else has more insight into that than I do. So in that case, please take it from there. Thank you. Maybe, maybe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Christian. Maybe our colleagues from uh, from the LMAC uh, have more insights they would like to share on the upcoming uh, HMA forum. Uh, just I want to uh, share about the risk education about the ORE. Uh, we have a lot of uh, projects. Uh, 
along all these uh, 10 years. And especially uh, we have, uh, we have uh, a concentrated, let's say, uh, campaign, especially in Northeast, because at the end of 2017, when the area uh, was uh, released, let's say, so we have a lot of uh, chil children that have affected by uh, ordinance. So we made a lot of campaigns there. And uh, fortunately, we have a lot of organizations like Balaman, MAG, uh, all organizations are uh, working in clearance. They are also working here in uh, risk education. We have entered a lot of technologies like virtual uh, reality and uh, a lot of uh, social media campaigns that try to reach all uh, all gender and all uh, the parts of uh, society, especially in the Northeast and for sure in, uh, in South Lebanon because most of the contamination is concentrated in South Lebanon. So we have a continuous campaigns here uh, especially related to uh, cluster munitions. And if you want, we can uh, share maybe later, I can connect with the MRE responsible, chief of the section, and we can share if you want uh, any statistics or uh, any technologies or uh, something that uh, we already deployed in risk education. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. I see that uh, Rana would like to uh, intervene. Yes, thank you. Sorry, just to uh, to add um, that we were planning a regional risk education uh, workshop in Lebanon, um, but we're thinking to shift this online. So this was jointly jointly with Lebanon. And um, please also allow me to flag that there's a one day event on 22nd of November for behavioral change. Uh, so if you're interested, we can send more information on that as well. Thank you. I hope. I answered, uh, Sebastian. Thank you. Thank you, Rana. Uh, Ariane, it's very nice to see you here, and I see you're raising your hand. Uh, please go ahead. I'm not sure if you were. S you need to enable your mic. I'm not sure if you were there. You have the permission to speak. Feel free to do so. All right. In the meantime, uh, there was a question in the chat uh, from Hiba. Uh, I think this one is for GICHD, and she's asking if operators uh, are going to be part of the new gender and diversity documentation review uh, done by uh, GICHD sorry, in November. Rana, if you, if you would like to. Yeah, sorry. sorry, I just typed the answer in the chat. Initially, it is uh, with ALMAC, uh, and then, of course, it's really uh, up to the ALMAC to, to invite the relevant implementing partners and as they see fit uh, within this process. But this is just a startup, uh, so there's one document that we will review. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, up. Uh, I don't see any. Uh, yes, I see. Lucy. Lucy, uh, I think you have a question. Just let me try. Right, Susan, go ahead, please. Hi, um, uh, more of a comment, actually, just to congratulate um, LMAC and um, Partners in Country for the successful Mine Action Forum, and also for um, LMAC and RMAC's transparency about these difficult to access areas. and. The study that they'll be doing with um, Geneva Centre. I think um, in time this is a thing that other state parties in Southeast Asia, Lao PDR is going to have the same problem. So it's great that this is being addressed um, in a way that is a technical survey and then uh, a transparent way so that the um, uh, convention community can have a conversation about it and, and see how Lebanon deals with um, this issue. Um, I guess if I did have a question, um, uh, it might be kind of, I, I wonder, of course, uh, Lebanon also has mine contamination. There's a lot of clearance in the blue line and in some of the um, Mount Lebanon areas as well. Um, how is the uh, uh, 
kind of um, donor appetite between mines and cluster munition um, clearance? And is it harder to get cluster munition um, funding or um, is the Mine Action Forum kind of helping donors coordinate better and fill the gaps where they do arise, for example, with um, UK funding being withdrawn? Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Um, a donor perspective, uh, maybe on this one, or if uh, Christian, you you keen to to reply to it, or if the LMAP also would like to address these uh, specific issues between how the donor approach in terms of funding uh, from um, land mining. Actually, I lost connection. I think uh, so. I couldn't. Uh... I couldn't hear uh, Mrs. Lucy, so if she can uh, write or uh, the donor perspective, uh, if they can give us their perspective, because I couldn't uh, hear the conversation because I lost connection. Right. Um, Lucy was keen to understand if uh, what was the approach of the donors in terms of funding for Lebanon uh, when it comes to uh, giving priorities to ever cluster munition or landmine as uh, as we know uh, Lebanon is quite there is a large contamination on, the, on landmine especially on the blue line and she was uh, asking about uh, the donor appetite for whether cluster munition or landmine. Christian for uh, for maybe for for Norway if you would like to uh, to go on the donor's perspective yet again. Sure, putting me on the spot here. Um, in terms of in terms of prioritization, I, I'm not quite sure actually what was in the latest uh, uh, agreement now, uh, which is uh, through the embassy there. But uh, I can check that up. Of course, there's not much time now uh, since we're probably at the end of the meeting. But uh, uh, as far as I know, we don't have any uh, preference. For for uh, the munition type as such, but it's it's more uh, you know I think it's more impact oriented what we uh, finance in terms of you know what's cleared uh, when and, and first. But it's, I don't think we have you know if that was the question any preference for either or uh, just based on the munition type. But that was maybe not a very good answer to the question which I didn't quite grasp though. So you'll have to excuse me if that's uh, completely off. We are unfortunately uh, reaching the, our time limit and um, basically I would like to thank everyone and if I may, on, on, on an operator perspective, allow me to share my quick opinion that to say that everything is in place today in Lebanon. We've got a strong and committed, committed national man action authority, a solid strategy, operators ready and able to expand their teams on, on BAC tasks. I think it's not crucial for the international community and the generous donor who have been supporting Lebanon to remain dedicated and support Lebanon in its international commitments uh, when it comes to making Lebanon free of cluster munition uh, by May uh, 2026. So that's my last message. I would like to really to say that this was a privilege for me to have all our guest speakers today and I would like to thank each one of you for your time and your inputs. Thanks for the question raised. It was really a pleasure moderating this event. Uh, thank you very much and uh, goodbye everyone. Thank you very much for joining.